BMW's G30 7th generation 5 series has changed, but not beyond recognition. The looks get sharpened, there's enhanced cabin media tech, engine electrification now proliferates, and a couple of extra power plant variants join the range. Otherwise, the lineup of saloon and touring models continues with much the same polished, Teutonic, and mildly dynamic appeal as before. Where other full executive saloons and estates in this segment are essentially downsized luxury saloons from the class above, the 5 Series has, throughout its history, mostly stood apart as a slightly more dynamic choice. Those ideals were compromised a little by the pre-2016 F10 generation Mark VI design, but this G30 Series model replacement signaled a welcome return to form thanks to the adoption of a stiffer aluminium-rich CLAR platform and some clever Clever, but mostly optional dynamic drive tech features and of course things continue in a similar vein in this lightly facelifted model which is not to suggest that little has changed here on the contrary there's quite a lot to talk about all the mainstream engines now get BMW's latest 48 volt mild hybrid tech uh, plus there's now a second plug-in version the existing four-cylinder 530e joined by a six-cylinder 545e variant on top of that the previous rather large gap between the ordinary models and the top flagship M5 Super Saloon has now been bridged by a new well new for Britain anyway V8 petrol variant uh, the M550 iX drive which is the derivative that we've chosen to test here. As before, across the saloon and estate range, the brand's X-Drive 4x4 system is optional to replace standard rear-wheel drive on the lesser powered models and it's standard on the faster ones. On the move, this remains the sharpest handling full executive segment model that you could choose. Our only reservation is that ride quality over porous surfaces and speed hubs can be a little more fidgety than we'd ideally like. On M Sport trim variants, an expensive optional M Sport Pro Pack includes a VDC adaptive damping system which deals with that issue to some extent. As for efficiency, well, the latest 48 volt mild hybrid electrified tech makes a small but significant contribution here. It enables the 5 to retain its status as the cleanest and the most frugal car in the class. Let's get to the WLTP figures. If we take the volume 520D diesel as an example, the variant that most customers choose, you can expect up to 58.9 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 127 grams per kilometer of CO2. The 530E plug-in, meanwhile, can improve those readings to up to 201.8 miles per gallon and 31 grams per kilometer, and it can run for up to 37.3 miles on all electric power. Over nearly half a century of production, there have certainly been moments of note in 5 Series design. The original E12 version of 1972 and the Mark V E60 model of 2003 both come to mind. Overall, though, this car has generally been characterized by the kind of confident but still relatively conservative styling which features on the improved version of this 7th generation G30 model. As expected, this 5 continues to share much under the skin with its bigger 7 Series Stablemate. Uh, the CLAR cluster architecture underpinnings in fact are pretty much the same as you'll find in a 7, although uh, BMW has stopped short of incorporating that pricier model's expensive carbon fibre reinforced carbon core. Take a seat inside and you're treated to a much improved, a much improved operating system 7.0 package of more sophisticated and better incorporated digital screen technology that's matched with some lovely use of leather and very high quality plastics, plus the application of real metal finishing rather than uh, metal effect plastic. It's not as muted or deliberately understyled as an Audi A6, nor as brash and in your face as the latest generation Mercedes E-Class. After years of bringing us rather half-hearted digital instrument displays that weren't completely configurable, BMW has finally bitten the bullet and delivered here a decently sized and properly customizable instrument binnacle screen as part of its new live cockpit professional package. Uh, that combines this 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster display with a center dash infotainment monitor of the same size, all of it accessible via touchscreen, uh, the usual 
use your lower iDrive controller and your voice, the latter element working via a new Hey BMW voice recognition system that uh, most owners will find easier to get to grips with. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now this is easy to because the doors. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now this is easy to because the doors swing open nice and wide, and the generous aperture that you enter through is now tall. And the stats back here bear that out. At the original launch of this G30 generation design back in 2016, we commented favourably on the way that the extra seven millimetres of wheelbase length delivered by this Mark 7 models CLAR platform. Uh, provided improved standards of knee room and leg room, although we did also point out that this BMW remains fractionally behind a rival Mercedes E-Class and Jaguar XF in that respect, that is still, of course, the case. Fitting in three adults back here is inhibited by this large central transmission tunnel, but at least the middle part of the bench isn't quite as uncomfortable as it is with some competitors. Finally, let's raise this aluminium boot lid and have a look at the luggage area, which in the saloon model is rated at 530 litres, helped by the relatively long overhang. That totals only a fraction less than an E-Class or an XF. With a plug-in hybrid 5 Series models, it'll be 120 litres smaller because the 9.2 kilowatt hour battery pack pinches a little bit of the space. Of course, if you're going to be needing that sort of capacity very often, then you'll be better off going for the Touring Estate version of this model, which offers a 500 170 litre boot in conventional form that's extendable to 1700 litres if you flatten the rear seat. With the 530e Touring, the respective figures are 430 and 1560 litres. In summary, though much is different here, much is as it always was. Over five decades, the question facing customers in the segment for full sized executive cars has often less been why they should choose a five, but why they shouldn't. And it still is, by a small but significant margin, this Munich maker still sets the class standard.